We've got a pretty hot topic tonight called exponential growth in decay. And we're pretty familiar with that word exponential. That just means our variable is an exponent. Um, and growth means something's getting larger. Decaying means something's getting smaller. And this is a problem that you've probably seen quite a bit about um, if you have a bank account, anything that has interest. Um, you know, this is something that really affects your everyday world. So you don't need to copy this down, but I do want to mention, you know, exponential functions are important primarily because they're their usefulness modeling a variety of real world phenomena where the percent that a quantity changes by over time stays constant. And like I said, anything that has interest is something that grows, you know, hopefully exponentially. So here's our formula for exponential growth. I'm just going to throw it at you. Um, you actually use this in ninth grade quite a bit. Um, it's the same formula. We're not changing anything about it. Um, we do just want to make sure we have it memorized. So it's y equals a times the quantity 1 plus r to the t. Now what do these stand for? Well, a is your initial amount. So let's get that in our notebook. Sometimes the word initial bothers us. I just want to be very clear. That's the amount initial is how much you start with. That's all initial means. R is the rate that something is, in this case, growing because it's exponential growth. They'll usually give it to you as a percent, and we need to make sure we express it as a decimal. Um, so the key there is two places. That's how we change from a percent to a decimal. Move it two places to the left. And T obviously stands for our time. Now you know it says exercise 2, um, I skipped exercise 1 here, so starting in exercise 2, just jot it in your notebook. Which of the following gives the savings S in an account if $250 was invested at an interest rate of 3% per year? Alright, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm jotting down that formula I have memorized. Y equals the amount, the initial amount, times 1 plus the rate to the time. All right, now we'll just put it in terms of their lingo. They want to know about a savings account. So instead of y equals, I'm just going to say s equals. What is my initial amount that we invested? Hopefully you're saying $250. Okay. One plus, um, it says 3%. So I want to be clear, to change 3% to a decimal, my decimal's at the end, I'm moving it two places to the left. So I'm going to say point. 03 raised to the time. Now, order of operations, I'm going to go inside my parentheses and do what it says. It says 1 plus 0.03. So I'm going to say that's really s equals 250 times 1.03 raised to the time. And that's it. They didn't want me to do anything but write that equation. I'll go and match it up. And I'm going to go with choice 2 is the one that matches to mine exactly. Um, just take note, look how tricky they are with the 1.03 versus the 1.3. Pay attention to the details. Exercise 3. The population of Fruit Bud New York is increasing at a steady pace of 2.5% per year. In order to plan for school growth, the town board would like to mathematically model the future population of the town. At the end of 2005, Fruit Bud population had 6,500 residents. Part A, determine equation for Fruit Bud's population P as a function of the number of years T since the end of 2005. All right, so I do the same thing. I start with my general equation. Y equals the amount 1 plus the rate to the T. Now, I just want to be clear. I'm using that plus there because I see the word increasing over and over. Now I switch it to their problem. Their problem doesn't say y equals a and r and t. They say write it about population. So I'm going to say p equals, okay, a is still my initial population, which they said is 6,500, okay, 1 plus, all right, 2.5%. We have to change that to a decimal. Now you might be saying, uh, it kind of is a decimal, but it's actually a percent at the moment. I still have to move that decimal two places to the left. So I'm going to say point. 025 raised to the t. Now it says I can keep t. It says I have to use the letters p and t. All right, so it's a little crooked, but I have it squished, squished on there. And I'm going to go one step further. I'll plan to put it as part d down here. I'm going to say that's p equals 6500. All right, this is still part a, of course. I'm just kind of squeezing it up here. Times, do the math, 1.025 raised to the t. All right, part b says, Sketch of graph of Fruit Bud's population as a function of time on the axis for, the, for 50 years following 2005. Be sure to label your y-intercept and your graphing window. Mark Fruit Bud's population at the end of 2055. 
All right, so notice they said they want to see it for 50 years, and that's why they have 0 to 50 here, and this is my time. Okay, and I'm just going to label it years, so let's make sure we label ours, time and years. And this is my population. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go straight to my calculator. I'm going to type that function in. I'm not going to do this by hand. So when I type that in and hit my zoom six, I don't see anything. And that's probably a good idea. So what I do is I go to my table and I look at zero. When I start, when my time is zero, when I first start, I have to already be at 6,500. So remember, when I initially start at zero, I'm at 6,500. That's what the word initial means. When I start, that's how tall I am. So I shouldn't have a dot there. I was just saying at zero, I should be this tall. Okay, and it wants me to graph from 0 to 50. So now think about this. Your window, okay, your x min has to go from 0 to 50 on your calculator. So I'm going to hit my window and I'm going to change that right away. Okay, now my y's, notice my y's going to start at 0. It doesn't even show up till I hit 6,500. I'm going to say like 0 to 10,000 and see what that shows me. So, I'm sorry, 10,000 ended up being too small. I ended up changing it to 30,000 so I could see the whole graph. And my graph looked nice and exponential like it was increasing like this. All right, part C says use your model from part A to predict the number of residents at the end of 2010. Round your answer to the nearest person. All right, well, let's just recall that it says we started in 2005 and we want to end in 2010. And our time value represents years since the end of 2005. So I'm not actually going to plug 2010 in. What are the years since 2005? Well, I would say that's five years. So for part C, I'm saying that's 6,500 times 1.025 raised to the fifth power. And to the nearest person, I get 7,354 people. Part D, graphically determine the year that the population reaches the 10,000 mark. Show your work on the graph from part C. Okay, well this is very easy. People is my 10,000, so I really want to know when does 10,000 equal 6,500 times 1.025 to the T. All right. So basically, I just go to my population side, I figure out where 10,000 is, and I graph that line. Okay, and wherever they meet, that is the year that's going to correspond to when it says determine the year the population reaches 10,000. All right, so on my graphing calculator, I need to put this in Y2. So just go down to Y2 and type in your 10,000, and our goal is to graph each and see where they intersect. Now, my picture is not drawn to scale um, at all. When I graph them on my calculator, um, you can see that my intersection turned out to be at 17. So my picture is pretty off um, that I had drawn up here. Uh, so for part D, show the work there. I would say at 17.4 uh, years is when my population will reach 10,000. Exercise four. The number of students at a particular school who have the flu is increasing at a rate of 12% per day. If at the beginning of Monday there were 56 students with the flu, then which of the following is the closest of number of students who have the flu on Friday? All right, so we know that it's increasing. So we're going to say that y equals the amount times 1 plus the rate to the time. All right, now let's talk about what we know. Do we know the actual amount that we started with? Okay, we had 56 students on Monday. And what rate am I going to use? If they tell me 12%, can you figure that out in your head by now? You're moving the decimal two places. I'm going to say 0.12. And now my goal is to figure out the time. Now, notice they said you increase at a rate of 12% per day. So I just want to be clear that our time is measured in days. So let's think about this. If we began Monday, the beginning of Monday, and we want to know the beginning of Friday morning, how many days is that? Okay, so I have the beginning of Monday to the beginning of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So from the beginning of Monday to the beginning of Tuesday is one, two, three, four. I would say my time is four. 
And then I'm just going to carefully chuck that in my calculator, and I get 88.117. Um, so I would say it's closest to 88. All right, exercise five, you've got this one on your own. Well, we want to see the perfect equation. So why don't you pause it and uh, come up with an equation and then turn it back on and see if you're correct. Well, this one was a little sneakier. Notice they said if the population of 45 rabbits, so that's my initial population, that's my amount I'm going to start with, increases at a rate of 8%, so I went with my 0.08, it says which of the following is the closest of time it will take for the population to double? Well, basically, all I did at this point is, what do I want my answer to be? If I have 45 and I want it to double, I want to end up with 90 rabbits. So basically, I just went through and I replaced all my time values until I got the one closest to 90. And if these are the answers I got when I carefully plugged them in. So I would say option four is the closest to 90. All right. Well, we've talked about exponential growth. Okay, that means something's growing or increasing. We now have, could also have exponential decay. And that means something, something is decreasing. So if you're not familiar with the word decay, let's think of it as decreasing. So our formula is going to look almost the exact same. Y equals A times 1 minus R to the T. Did you notice the catch there? If you are increasing, it's a plus sign. If you are decreasing, it's a minus sign. So you do need to slow down and really highlight that keyword, whether you're increasing or decreasing. Exercise two. If the population of a town is decreasing, did you catch that word? By 4% per year, that started with 12,500 residents, which of the following is the projected population in 10 years? So same formula. Y equals the amount times 1 minus R to the T. All right, and it's a minus because of that word decreasing. And the initial amount is 12,500. One minus, what number are you going to put in for rate? Okay, remember, 4%, the decimal's here, you have to move it two places to the left. So I'm going to say that's 0 0.04 raised to the T, and in this case, they told us our time is 10. So I've got 12,500. This is point. 9, 6 raised to the 10th. And I just plug and chug in my calculator and I get a nice answer of 83, 10, blah, blah, blah. So closest to that value there. Exercise 3. Hydrolys hydrolysis have found that the amount of water that soil can absorb in inches per hour decreases, there's my keyword, by 30% for each hour the soil is flooded with water. A particular dry soil is initially able to absorb 4 inches of water per day. Write an equation A of T in inches per hour the soil can absorb if T represents the hours since the soil was flooded. So again, I'm going to start with my generic equation. Y equals the amount times 1 minus the rate to the time. And now I'll switch it into their lingo. They don't want you to say Y. They want you to say A of T equals what is the amount we started with. It says initially four inches of water per hour, one minus my rate, if I see 30%, move that decimal two places, 0 0.30 raised to the t. Now remember, a of t means the only variable in your equation should be the variable t. Okay, if it said a of f, then I should see an f here. Part b says sketch that function on the axes below. So I'm just going to type that in my calculator. And I could clean that up even further. I could say, I'll just write it down here, that was really a of t equals 4 times 0 0.70 to the t. And that's what I'm going to graph, of course. Let's see, at 0, it should have a height of 4. Um, at 1, it should have a height of 2.8. At 2, it was 1.96, 1.32. You get the idea. Okay, it's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Remember, never touching that x-axis because it's exponential. All right, part C says, a steady rainfall of 5 inches per hour is flooding the soil. Water will run off the soil when the rainfall rate exceeds the rate at which the soil can be absorbed. At what time to the nearest tenth of an hour will runoff start? All right, so it was a little wordy. Let's just kind of recap what it's saying. You have a rainfall of 0.5 inches per water is flooding the soil. 
water will run off the soil when the rate exceeds the rate at which the soil can be absorbed. So remember, that's what part A was, the rate at which the water can be absorbed. Now, if that number is 0.5 or above, we're going to flood the soil. All right, so basically, I'm going to graph y equals 0.5, and any time I hit above, I'm going to have flooded soil. So if this represents y equals 0.5 in my calculator, so in y2 I put that, it's my y2 equation, where these two lines intersect is where I'm going to start to have flooding. And any time that this 0.5 exceeds the absorption rate, we're going to have flooding. So right here, I have more absorbing than I have flooding. Here they're equal, and now I have more flooding than I have absorbing. So all I need to do is graph that in my calculator and see where they intersect. So again, I'm just putting that in Y2 and hitting graph. Okay, and my goal is to see that intersection point. And I get when the time is 5.8. You should be doing that on your own calculator, just graphing and seeing where they intersect, second trace intersect. So what's that, what that is saying again is any time I exceed a time of 5.8, any time after this, there's going to be flooding because there's more flooding than there is absorbing. All right, the last thing you need to be able to do is determine just from the equation whether it's growth or de decay and what is the growth rate or decay rate. So let's take a look at example one. Jot this in your notebook. Y equals 500 times 1.67 to the T. All right, I want to recall that this number out front, let's write it in there, is the initial amount. Okay, that's how much we start with. And this tells me whether I'm growing or decaying. If you're bigger than one, then that's one plus the rate. If you're smaller than one, it's one minus the rate. So if I'm bigger than one inside there, I know this had to be growth. Okay, if that number is bigger than 1, then this is exponential growth. Now the question is, what is the rate? Well, if it's 1 plus the rate equals 1.67, could you easily tell me what the rate is? Right, that's what's inside the parentheses, 1 plus r equals 1.67. If I subtract 1, I get the rate equals 0.67. Now what is that as a percentage? We'll just move the decimal place two points back to the right. So that's 67%. Okay, let's try another one. So again, you'll just have to be able to look at these and quickly tell if we have growth or decay. Uh, y equals 250 times 0.75 raised to the t. All right, so again, this 250 is the initial, and inside here tells me the growth rate. Just by looking at 0.75, should you know if this is growth or decay? Well, because it's smaller than 1, remember, that's decay. So that's the first thing I want to write down. It's DK or, whoops, that should be an E, or decreasing. So I say to myself, okay, what's the formula? If it's decaying, it's 1 minus the rate equals 0.75. All right, so my goal is to solve for R, so I'm going to subtract 1, subtract 1. Notice I'm left with negative R equals negative 0.25. Divide by my negative, and my rate is 0.25. Now again, what is that as a percent? Well, that percent is going to be 25 percent. Okay. All right, let me give you one more. Number three. Y equals five times, uh, let's see, 0.96 to the T. All right, you've got this one on your own. Pause it, see what you get. I want to know if it's growth or decay, the initial amount, and what the rate is. All right, well, welcome back. You've turned me back on. So the initial Okay, hopefully it's the easy one. We initially started with 5, whatever. Um, this 0.96 is less than 1, so I know it's decay. So I'm going to say 1 minus the rate equals 0.96. Solve for r, so negative r equals negative 0.04. So r equals 0.04. Therefore, my rate is actually 4% decrease. Okay. Well, I think that does it for us tonight. Hopefully you've got the difference between exponential growth and decay, and we look forward to some practice tomorrow. Have a great night.